Digitel is one of the leading companies helping associations leverage their content through event live streaming, webinars, and knowledge distribution. Take advantage of their 32 years of streaming success and generating revenue for their clients than any other company hands down. For more information on Digitel, go to digitelinc.com. Okay, you are nine, eight, okay seven, so we're gonna we're gonna be yeah, uh, 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 Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here are your hosts, BizBash CEO David Adler and Executive Editor Beth Kormanick. Hi, David. Hey Beth, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk about swag today. Our guests are Susan Turnock and Heather Kanofsky. They're the co-owners of Gifts for the Good Life. It's a corporate gifting company based in Pennsylvania. And we're not talking about a company that just slaps your logo on a water bottle and tote and calls it a day, right? Oh, no. This is a whole different thinking and a whole different strategy around gifting. Right. They get really, really creative and they see themselves as partners in telling a brand story through gifts. And they call this actually gratitude marketing. Do you want to tell us what that is? I I love that concept because, you know, it's sort of like you're really thanking people all the time. I mean, when you get a gift, it's like, oh, my God, thank you. You want to give them a hug. And uh, they're basically hugging their customers and the people that they want to influence. And they're using the concept of surprise and delight, which was talked about incessantly the last few years. And I, and I really think they've taken this to a real art and science and not necessarily with expensive gifts, but with concepts and strategies that allow people to feel uh, what an event is going to be like before, during and even after. Right. So they'll be talking to us about the process of smart gifting and how it doesn't have to cost a fortune. Uh, even though their clients, you know, can have big budgets, their clients have included Hulu, the Ritz Carlton and NASCAR, but they point out that even small gifts can tell a big story. So let's listen to your conversation with Susan and Heather. So we're here with Heather and Susan, and we want to talk about the state of swag. But I wanted to first start out asking that question. Is swag a bad word? We don't think so. We think it has had negative connotation in the past, and we're trying to turn that around a little bit. It, it doesn't have to be a tote or a bottle with a logo on it. Swag to us is anything that you give in that gifting moment, a touch point, anything that's, that really speaks to your company and your story it doesn't have to be a bad word. It doesn't have to be something that you throw away when you get home. So or... you guys are leaning into it, basically, as opposed to objecting to it. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> All right. I also like anything Good. that makes what we do part of pop culture and anything that, that you know, swag is, you know, in the Urban Dictionary. And I love that. <laughs> I mean... That makes me feel totally cool, and I I like it. I feel like it's like one of those words that you should reclaim and make your own. So I love it. I love it. Does it. not bother me at all. So I knew you guys really well, and we have had many discussions, deep deep discussions yeah. <laughs> on the value of gifting and things like that. What makes what you do different than what everyone else does in this whole product world, which you're not really in, but you're kind of in. You're kind of reinventing a complete category here. Tell us a little bit what you're doing. Sure. I, I think we've brought a little bit of an, an art to branding, and that's what we always try and do is, you know, again, we're not trying to slap a logo on a tote. We're trying to tell a story and, and do it with a little bit of art. We both have an art background. Heather is a fine artist, printmaker, watercolor artist, um, and I have a graphic design background. And so we're trying to bring that to a relatively rote industry where People are tired of getting those things. So how do we change that a little bit and add that touch of art, whether it's in the paper that goes along with it or how it's given or the experience of opening that box? So you know, before, we, before we go into that, give us the gifts for the good life experience. I mean, I've experienced it firsthand at many events, including Engage and places like that. Give us sort of what, if you don't know anything about Gifts of the Good Life, what is the experience that happens at a particular client? Well, I would say it's all about layering. It's like fragrance layering or it's experience layering. So we're thinking about when we approach any project, what the 
end user, what the user is going to experience, how they're going to feel, how we want to make them feel, um, how we take care of them, and what the entire process from the moment that they receive it or the moment before they receive a gift till packing it up and taking it home um, and everything in between. So that could be directions. It could be um, how it's presented. It could be um, who presents it and what they're wearing. What, whatever surrounds the actual experience, and the layering of that. So it could be as, as simple as a box that we're sending and what, what does that mean um, from the moment that someone gets it from their post, post, you know, from their post office or from, you know, their postal uh, carrier to, to the moment that they, or it's dropped on their desk to the moment that they bring it home to, you know, or re-gift it or whatever. The whole thing, we're thinking about every aspect, every person touching it. Um, and I think that that's a different approach. I'll tell you what, go like, back, let's go never, back, yeah. let's go back to, yeah. I want to try to get the story. Why don't you tell, the one that I know is the story of the engaged gifting process. Can you talk about beginning at the event and the post-event process that you go through? Because I remember getting gifts so often, having such an indelible effect on me, uh, and it wasn't about the cost of the good. It was about the delivery of the good. It was about the feeling that you were projecting. Talk about what your strategy is for Engage, and then maybe we can use that as the case study here. Yeah, sure. It's a great case study. Well, And, and Engage, just to, to take a step backwards, Engage is a semi-annual luxury wedding business conference. And every time it's at a, or usually it's at a different location, and it has a different color palette and a different aesthetic and a different theme. And we try and set that in the pre-arrival gift that gets sent usually a couple of weeks before they arrive to the location. And from that moment where they get that box and open it up, that's where they know all of the details about Engage. They, it sets the tone. It tells the color palette, which is a very important part of Engage um, since it does change and, and we live and die by that color palette. Um, and it gives them usually items that they can use in their travel to get there. Then when they arrive on site... Wait, wait, but before you go into that, the yes. gift that you get, what I find was so interesting is that this, the experience of opening the gift, this is not just one thing. This is a custom box with lots of different elements to tell the... Um, we do like to make it different for every single time, and it, it really pushes us, and we love that about it. It's what it makes the job so interesting and fun What were some of the themes? What were some of those themes that you've done, the most successful ones? <laughs> well, I, I, I will jump in and say that my favorite... Um, we really love a, a countdown. And, you know, this is a highly anticipated event for many people. They, they have, you know, personal connections at, at Engage and they wait and they save up. I mean, it's, you know, it's an investment and people are really looking forward to this moment where they're going to be learning and get inspired and party. And, um, so we are like, we're, we're banking on that. So how do we elongate and make that experience even more impactful. And so from the moment they get that box, the outside, of course, has custom postage that we create. The entire exterior is branded in an interesting way. Every time it's different. But my favorite one was the one that we created um, where you opened up the box and there was a an Advent-style box within that so that it had a countdown and each number as you opened it up, reveal part of the event that you should know about and what you need to be prepared for that. So it had everything from, um, you know, what might be kind of like a boring luggage tag, but this was a completely different leather luggage tag and it was in a different shape and, you know, done in an interesting way. Um, of course, personalized um, to like custom nail polish that we did for the women that would match for the gala and um, collar stays for the men. We always... Or typically, I would say, we always can, can, even though it is mostly women, we always do male and female gifts, especially for something like pre-arrival, because it really does show that we're thinking and paying attention to the person rather than it, all attendees are the same. No, but, you know, even though there's only 75 men, let's say out of 350, those men should be considered and they should feel special and, um, and hosted in an interesting way. So that, um, that was one of my favorite pieces. So that was a great unboxing moment where you could open up each piece and there were little cards to inspire you. There were, um, there was like, um, a little uh, sunscreen, 
that was done in a credit card format that was highly, you know, high design and just really fun, interesting things because we're aware that we're setting trends the moment that people are getting this. These are people who are watching for trends and it is our responsibility to educate them through that process and say, okay, so here's what the things that we're looking at. These are the things we're thinking. Um, we also introduce the language and the idioms and everything else that is part of the experience. Because when we brand engage, we're not just thinking of the color palette or um, like a theme, but we're also thinking about what is the language surrounding it? How, what is the voice of engage for that engage? What are the shapes? What is the texture? I mean, all of that is, is addressed in the style guides that we create for them. Well, you're using the and, gift. Um, you're using the, it sounds like you're using the gifting guy, the gift, the gift, the initial gift as the initial storytelling platform. And the packaging yeah. is as important. And also, what I notice uh, that's a different behavior is that people are taking pictures on Instagram of the gift before they even get there. And uh, so right. the amplification of the gift becomes an experience as opposed to just the pleasure of getting a gift. Right. And it's also it's engaging in, in that audience, not intending, in a different way. We really want to interact with them. And when, when you're perforating a you know, something on a box and opening up and finding a surprise that was made just for you. That's an interaction. That's not just gift giving. That you're interacting with that brand. And, you know, Engage is a love mark for a lot of people and a lot of attendees. So we want to make sure that we're speaking to that. Do you think that the pre-gift is now a major trend, that, that what you're doing is actually getting a head start? I mean, would you right. suggest to the yeah. people listening to this that that may be a whole new way of thinking about gifting? Absolutely. I'm trying to do that. <laughs> As, as often as we can, we feel like it's a, it's a touch point that often gets missed. Why not start it way before they get there? Is that the most there, effective? There were actually two pre Yeah. I mean, we actually did two pre-arrivals for that one, if you remember. <laughs> we did a, um, we did an advent style card, which kind of gave people a heads up about some of the themes because people get nervous about dressing and whatever. Um, and then we did the secondary gift. So we started, I think, four months out or three months out. And, you know, yes, of course, you run the risk of, like, maybe there's attrition in the, in the guest count. But the reality is, is that it really doesn't matter because that person who's gotten it, maybe they don't end up, you know, maybe that's, I don't know what the percentage is, a couple of people might drop out. But the reality is we've already made that imprint on them. <laughs> and that's how that, that, and that experience, they're still going to be, Thing, even if they you know, have to change because of a, an obligation of, a, of an event that they have to attend, they're so invested at that point that it's never, it's never a waste. And I don't think they see it as that either. So we are thinking about the countdown and the pre-arrival as absolutely um, one of the top trends that we, that, we're, that we see and that we've been part of, that we, we appreciate that whole element of people wanting to check their Instagram every day to see like what, you know, um, you know, what is happening with the event. They're excited about it and they want to see how other people are dressing for it or what they're packing or what they're doing or anticipating. And I think that really creates a community even before you get on site. So is this part of the secret sauce of Gifts for the Good Life? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell everybody that. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's move on to the event itself. What are some of the characteristics of what makes gifting uh, important at the actual event and arrivals and some of the things that you do differently? The last two engages, we started incorporating a pop-up type shop where instead of handing someone a, get, a welcome gift, a bag or a tote or having it in their room, we wanted to elongate that moment and have people connect and engage right there. Um, and, and take their time and look through and, and see and pick and choose. And I think this is, this speaks to other, um, information about swag is that having people choose something, even if it's a small choice, it makes them connected to that. And in their brain, they're thinking, oh, well, I chose that. That's something I wanted. I didn't just get this. I wanted that. So we set up a pop up, um, for the last two engages where, People could go around and pick certain things and, again, interact with, with the brand and, you know, pick a skincare line. And, and we actually had the expert that created the skincare line talking to them, each person, and finding out what they needed and choosing what was right for them. Um, there was an inspiration station, a, a water, um, water infusion station where they could pick what goes in their water bottle. 
So instead of just giving them a branded water bottle, we actually filled it with them. So it was something they, that they could carry around and enjoy. Um, so things like that that really made, instead of just handing them a bag and walking out, they spent, you know, a good 45 minutes there sometimes and really interacted. Is that, is that another part of the formula in a sense that this, I mean, it does fit into the whole millennial minded piece of, uh, of mm-hmm. participatory participation and empowerment right. and all of those aspects of yeah. gifting. Um, mm-hmm. and, and these gifts are not Absolutely. huge gifts, but you choose them more for the ingenuity than for the price. Is that what I hear? That's what I see. And, and the inspiration. Well, is, yeah. And the quality. I mean, the quality. I really feel like the quality is really important. I mean, some of the gifts that we, that we gave last time. So the, the last, um, the last engage was at Sea Island and it had a very different feel than the one at Breakers, the first pop up that we had done. But this one had, it was supposed to feel like almost like, um, like a very eclectic, curi- like there should be curios and things that you're like, oh, that's interesting. What is that? Like, for instance, we picked some things that were just interesting, like graph, like we, in the inspiration station, we picked a, um, we curated a selection of graphite um, objects that you could draw with. Uh, certainly, that's not something that people think of right away for a conference, <laughs> but and maybe people didn't even use it at the conference, but the idea that it was something really special that they had to learn about and that somebody actually made for them, it, you should have seen the transformation in those people in that moment. And it was interesting to see, like, because we gave them the option, you could get that graphite piece, the piece of artwork, or you could get a um, a set of really cool colored pencils, or we made custom um, watercolor kits that were based on the palette. Um, and then you could actually paint one of the watercolors um, that um, that there was a drawing in a watercolor that um, Emily Marchese had made for us that that people could then actually paint. Um, so and these were like odd choices in a way, but people loved it and they would be like, "No, no, I'm a, I'm so, a colored pencil person. Oh no, I'm a painter. I would absolutely." So they they tell you immediately who they are in that moment, and they would sit around and ask their friends like, "What do you think I should do?" Um, We also did a living wall, um, which was a really interesting thing with um, Vine Garden. And they created a living wall of uh, local plants. And then we had um, small presses, like flower presses that people could choose. That was the fourth option. So it was really, so you could literally cut things off of the living wall and press them so that you would have a moment of the island for yourself. So this is pretty, I mean, some of this is pretty conceptual stuff um, that we ask our clients to do, but it resonates. Well, you're really and in the intersection it, between marketing and activations and gifting mm-hmm. and engagement Absolutely. and, you know, the f- physical sort of textural things. And it sounds really, mm-hmm. really sort of, uh, sort of a cutting edge approach to the future of gifting. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we like, we, you know, this is what we like personally. And we always try and create things and experiences that we would be excited about. Um, and I think that that, I, I want to be, I, I want to be loud. I want to feel like I've never experienced anything like what I'm experiencing. And one of the moments that, you know, last year we went to the, our family went to the Cooper Hewitt and I don't know whether you went David, but there was a really cool, um, hallway of scents. And one of the things was, there was this amazing artist who had created all these like scents from, um, had captured scents, from um, Central Park, and it was so exciting. And I thought, that's what I want the pop up to feel like. I want people to be like, holy cannoli! Like I, there's a living wall, and I get to pull these off and take it home. So, like, I want people to be that excited, as excited as so I was. You're kind of saying that authenticity. I mean, I always say that transparency is the new authenticity in a sense, and mm-hmm. that uh, <laughs> it is. And, yeah. and, and in many cases, it's kind of like bringing gifting back to not the crappy stuff that you would, you know, the pen world, and you really are taking it to the next right. level. I want to move on to, um, in the conferences themselves, you're actually gifting the attendees at their place in the conference in an interesting way. Why do you do that, and what's the theory behind it? Hmm. Well, I was going to say that we believe that every experience can be accessorized, and that it should be. Um, Every experience can be accessorized. I think we got a little quote poster going up. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, 
I feel like there, it's a moment where we're asking them to sit in their seat for like six or eight hours. You know, yes, of course, there's these amazing breaks in between, and that's the hallmark of Engage as well. But, you know, you're, you're sitting down, you're asking them to engage, you're asking them to like be there. What can we, what can we give them that would make their, heighten their experience? What is so that? So we've done everything from, yeah, I mean, one of my favorites was the one that we did. It was all orange, and it was like an orange um, juice container that we had created. And it was scented, and it touched every sense. So it was everything from, like, um, a, a, a scented cuticle cream that was, like, a, a that felt really beautiful to scratch and sniff stickers on the outside to, um, I think we had a scratch and sniff pencil for that one, too, right, that was branded, mm-hmm. that was really cool. We did... It was just all different little objects that all pointed back to the idea of this orange grove, which was the environment of the conference for that year, um, or for that for that one at the Breakers. So the idea that um, we've done everything from like the last one we did at Sea Island was um, we had done a lot of paper quilling for this piece for this project, and so we did a large abstract paper quilling piece, um, and then we put in a live plant. Um, because everything is about like the place. So this was an air plant from Sea Island. And then, um, and that, so it was very sculptural. It was a really different kind of approach. Um, and it had the agenda standing up inside of it, but it was like more, more of an experience. That there's a beautiful piece that connects you to the stage, connects you to the speaker. So we didn't accessorize that much, honestly, but it was just a couple of really beautiful. Oh, and then it had a really interesting pad that was shaped. I forgot about all that. There was nothing but who else was in there. I forgot what with, it was. With a couple of tools, um, desktop tools as well, you know, pen, paper clips, so. binder clips, things like that. But it was really about this long pad that they could then use and bring back to their desk as so well. So what is the, I mean, what is the payoff to the attendee or to the, even to the organizer? Is it the experience, all these gifts allow you to, be able to tell your friends that this is such a great experience as well as the content. So the, so this is part of the content of the, of the program in a sense. It's tangible. It's a tan, it is a tangible, right? It's like we, t- you know, I remember when we were, when we worked primarily, you know, with weddings, it's like after your wedding, all you really have besides your marriage, which is obviously quite <laughs> valuable, but is your ring, right? And your photos. I mean, honestly, and your memories. But the reality is there's a tangible, right? There's these tangibles. So we're always thinking, what are the tangibles? What makes this experience something that you could share with someone else? So these things, even though they might not be something you give to someone else, you can use them as props as you share with your, with your staff, with your friends, with your family. Oh, look at this. When, they, when we sat down, this was what was there. So, so- and then such and such, you know. So do you think that that's from a gifting, sort of the sort of the dopamine hit of gifting, it's part of that tangibility thing that you guys strive for? Absolutely. We love dopamine. Yeah, 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 no, (laughs) dopamine is probably the key. I mean, when you get a gift, it must score on the dopamine levels very high. Any evidence to that effect? (laughs) Uh, I I have some evidence. I I, I love to get gifts. I mean... I, I also know for myself that um, I'm also very picky and in terms of like, I love being considered. I love really when somebody actually, like, I don't care what somebody gives me, but if I feel like they thought of me, they truly thought of me um, and our relationship. Like I came back from the Caymans this morning and on my desk, my staff had set up um, some of my favorite suites. Like, what did that cost? Like 25 cents, a dollar 50. I don't know. But like, you know, there's my, there's my suites that they have all put on my desk. So let's, like, let's, it's just, let's, talk that. L- let's talk about that. Let's talk about, let's talk about budget a little bit in terms of this. I mean, yeah. y- you people, um, it's expensive to gift properly, but does it have to be? I mean, what advice do you give to the person that's an event organizer that's listening to this podcast on how to do it on your own if you can't afford to hire gifts for the good life and create this massive experience? What do they do? What's the rule of thumb? I think the important part, and it doesn't have to be expensive, um, you know, we, we've done things that were concept driven and the actual gift wasn't anything, you know, expensive, but it was, it was about the story. And so that's what I would say. Um, 
is to focus on the story. What do you want to get across? What do you want that person to feel? How do you, how do you do that? Is it through writing something really interesting, something that, you know, they can then tell that story to other people and, you know, going back to that love mark, you know, how do you, and I think this is, this is my answer for the engaged question as well. Um, we're really making love marks, you know, for these people to connect to that brand and that experience and making that moment. So I feel like it doesn't have to be expensive. It has to be thoughtful and interesting and, and have something that, that lasts so that you, that person thinks about you three months from now, it will be on their desk or it will, you know, something will trigger it and you'll say, Oh yeah, I remember that one gift I got that one time that seemed like it was just for me. And it was so well thought out. That's where I, I feel like the importance lies. Not not so much in a very expensive brand tote bag or whatever it is. You know, it, it's really in the other part of it. The thoughtfulness of the whole you know, of the. Of, it's like getting the exactly. card and writing a nice thing in the card, <laughs> as opposed right, to just right, the right. card. Uh, exactly. It's still it's still the thought that counts. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that one of the what when I sit down and think about a project, whatever it is. Um, Sue and I will definitely do a touch point assessment. And we a do touch point assessment? Is that part of your rules? Is that part of a touch point assessment? Is that, mm-hmm. part of your lexicon? It is. We okay. do, actually, we yeah. call it a touch point audit, but I, I, no one likes the word audit. But the reality is <laughs> that every brand should sit down and think about what what they're doing. What are, what are the touch points? How could they be improved? Um, and that's how I look at it at an event as well. What are the moments that we can create? And they might be, and and honestly, if you don't have the budget, you should be thinking about the most unusual times to give someone mm-hmm. um, that you can really touch that. Like what? Give us some really examples of that. It. We actually well, pre-arrival, it, yeah, pre-arrival, <laughs> and then you know, a, a departure is great, but also after the event, we love. Um, when it comes to gifting clients, we. We rarely ever like to do holiday gifting. We feel like, you know, we'll do it, obviously, but we feel like it gets caught up in everybody else's gifting. Why don't you do it after or way before? You know, find a different time when people aren't expecting it, when they're not getting gifts in March or in August or whatever it is. Find a different time. Set yourself apart. You know, if you're sending it mid-December, that's going to be tough to compete with everybody else. Um, so if you can find a different time. And sometimes you can kind of hook into a zeitgeist where you're like, okay, for instance, we had um, one of our clients was um, wanting to do their gifting way before the holidays, and um, they wanted to do this really special blanket and with a with a really lovely note, and it was monogrammed for each couple. And it just so happened that it was it landed the day after the the um, the election, and uh, this gift. Evidently, felt people felt so taken care of by this financial planner that they were like, called him all day long, thanking him and thanking the company. Thank you for thinking of me and thank you for like wrapping me in the security of what you do. So like sometimes you can hook into that accidentally, you know, like, but it was really smart. He planned, you know, we were planning to do it way in advance and it just so happened that it worked. Like that, it was the perfect time and people, it had a message that resonated far beyond what the, you know, what the intended message was. Um, but you know, the thing is, is that any time that you can catch people off guard and say, Hey, I'm really thinking of you. I'm really, we're in this together. Or like, I, you know, our brand, you mean something to us. I think people really want to hear that message. So they're ready. So like a turn down could be a good place to do that. Although turn downs are really expensive because of the added expense of, you know, hotels or, or resorts. But there's all different places that you can just do one small thing. And make a real difference for someone. Do you see? Do you see um, brands? Uh, brands are getting into this even more. I mean, I believe that we're in this sort mm-hmm. of the morphing of the industry, where where there's not much difference between a wedding and a corporate event and a conference, and because it's all about the same feeling of the dopamine hits, really, frankly. Right. Right. And you've been saying that for a while that all these are morphing, and I think that's really true. And I think people expect for a personal relationship. You know, that's what they're looking for, a personal experience. So even if it is, you know, they're still investing their time, whether it's a wedding or if it's a conference or if it's a, you know, whatever. I mean, any time, you know, a show, a, you know, 
whatever it is, they're, they're investing valuable time and money into whatever they're doing. So people are looking for something so, that sets that moment apart. So smart gifting really is content. the ultimate in personalization too. And hugging that mm-hmm. customer. I mean, I mean, you mm-hmm. can't do better than this, I guess. But it, but, but what about the, the flip side of the t-shirts and all this? When you say swag in the, in the, in the mm-hmm. general sense, you get a gift bag and there's nothing in it and you're more disappointed than ever because all they're doing is giving you a bunch of brochures. I mean, what's your reaction right. to that right. type of feeling that you get? Mm. Well, I think people really resent being given. I mean, what we hear. Is they resent having to get rid of something, mm-hmm. they, or filling a landfill, or um, they resent that. <laughs> so you're doing more damage in some ways. I'd rather give something very small and in an interesting way than um, than give somebody something that they are going to resent. Mm-hmm. I would love for them to regift it if they love it so much. I mean, sometimes people are like, you know, I loved this so much, but there was really someone else that should have had it. Um, and I gave it to them. I hope that's okay with, you know, you guys. I was like, no, no, I'm thrilled that you gave it to someone else because that adds to our message. One more person that knows is one more person that knows. That's great. Let, let me, let me, let's end on the question. Let's crystal ball things here. Uh, you have mm-hmm. been around in business for a while and you've seen the industry change. You've actually seen people sort of come to your point of view. What's the next thing that you mm-hmm. see that's happening in the, uh, in the idea of gifting? I think it's going to get more more and more personal. I feel like, you know, it's not it's not going to be about the brand so much and their logo. It's going to be about the person that you're gifting. And, you know, this is the special snowflake idea. <laughs> but I, I think focusing on, on the recipient. And the more you can do that, you know, however that is, whatever that looks like, the better off you're going to be. It's not, you know... It, even just giving them something that that doesn't even have your logo on it, they're going to still connect it to your brand. They don't need to see, you know, that that mark on there to know that it was from you. They're going to remember. If it was something really good, they're going to remember. So I feel like it's going to focus more on the recipient than the actual brand or company. Okay, so I, think, I think that it's I, yeah. Heather, I think it's uh, going to merge with experience more and more. I think yeah. mm-hmm. I think it's going to become the experience part. I mean, and the more it can be that the more seamless it is that I'm not gifting you, but this is just part of the amazing experience that you're entitled to by being part of this, um, the better. So like we see like micro pop-ups, we see like, so not just one, we see it all the way through an event. Um, we see all these, um, I was just thinking like smaller, 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 and it's not smaller gifts. It's not maybe not smaller investments, but smaller moments, really parceling it out and making, I, to me, that would be the ultimate is just like people considering an entire project and an entire moment, an entire experience and merging that with the access, the accessorization of it. So, yeah, we're thinking about um, definitely really just merging well, gifts with experience so that it's seamless. It seems like every ad agency or experience agency in the world needs this as the strategy. I mean, gifting is the ultimate payoff for an experience, actually. We Wait, think so. It's gratitude marketing. <laughs> gratitude marketing. Gratitude marketing. Let's end on that. That is yeah. brilliant. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Bye-bye. David, I really liked their philosophy about how there's no one-size-fits-all for gifts. If you want to make it impactful, it has to be personalized, and it has to tell a story. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what they're doing. Their, their strategy piece of this is so interesting the fact that they put so much, much effort into integrating what they do with the rest of the event. And I think that's kind of the secret sauce that they have. It's really the idea of really partnering early on. Right. And we've heard from event planners on Gather Geeks who have said they're no longer doing gift bags. That you know They've done away with them. And I think it's interesting that what Susan and Heather were talking about is different from just a gift bag that you walk away with. It's part of the message of the event. And I think that's part of the evolution of what swag and gifts and their whole role in events is today. And I also think that the, in the, you know, the world of marketing activations, the idea of taking something away with you at the end of the activation is going to become even more important than ever. And not just the experience, but the thing that you remember. Right. It cements the message. It gives you that lasting memory. 
one of my favorite trends, and they incorporate this idea at events like Engage, is the make your own gift bag. Uh, design oh, yeah. your own swag. And I think that's such a great idea because it puts the control in the guests' hands and they feel like they're getting something personal to them. I've seen this from other companies, like a, a gift closet. Uh, it was the Savannah Convention and Visitors Bureau, actually. And so they had items made by artisans in Savannah, or cookbooks that reflect the city. And Gifts for the Good Life did this at Engage. And you know, they're sensitive to having a variety of items that are going to appeal to men or women and people with different interests. And it's a great idea. You know, imagine the day when they add data to that piece and you actually know that a person chooses an orange thing or a red thing. And what does that mean about them? I mean, when they add data to this and it even gets more personalized, I think we have that to look forward to in our future. Absolutely. Smart gifting. Smart gifting, data-driven gifting. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it has reached that. No, it absolutely has. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to get pretty analytical. I think that's why we call this Gather Geeks. Exactly. So, Beth, what's going on at BizBash? David, our spring design issue is out. Everybody is excited about spring galas and music festivals that are kicking off. And you can get your inspiration for these in our design issue. We are highlighting the top 40 event designers working in North America. And it's so exciting because they work on the biggest events in the U.S. and Canada and what we look for when we're choosing this list is originality of thought and high level execution. You could spend a lot of time with these beautiful designs and, you know, some of these are over the top maximalist designs. Others have a more minimalist aesthetic and I have such a great appreciation for what they do. I've been thinking about like why a user or reader would love to read these types of things because it really unlocks your own ingenuity. Because the minute you see what great work this is, you're able to immediately relate it to what you do day to day. And it enhances your day to day job that moment that you actually see it. Because your mind then starts to going into overdrive and thinking about how you can do what some of the things that you've seen and mix it into what you do. Exactly. Exactly. So there's plenty to look at and experience. So you can find that. If you haven't already gotten it in your email, you can find it on bizbash.com. So, Beth. Till next time, gather on. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a rating and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. If you are looking for a state-of-the-art learning management system, take a look at Digitel's newest platform, Opus DX. Opus DX offers the robust platform for event organizers and associations to manage content. To learn more and schedule a demo, email them at contactus at digitelinc.com. That's contactus at D-I-G-I-T-E-L-L-I-N-C.com.